Welcome to the Options Inc. Blueprint Weekly Income Report. This is Michael Schulman on March 20th, 2023. Reminder, we are trading tomorrow, uh, 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Of course, the typical and uh, weekly review of trades and results from last week, which despite what was going on, was a good week. And maybe we'll spend uh, more time together in, in this update uh, on what's going on with the market sell-off. It, it requires a bit of an explanation. So last week, we closed uh, two winners. Uh, to heck with the way the market's going, we're going to make money. One was on Schwab, which had been unduly hit with huge volatility. Uh, lots of premium uh, in, the, uh, in the chains. Roku was always volatile. Uh, same thing. And we had very, very nice returns. And if you throw this into the selling of calls on positions where we get accepted shares and you uh, put this into a roll, you had a very, very healthy amount of cash coming in, and that is what we do. Uh, for those of you who are new, for those of you who send me emails who have not taken training, not listened to anything I've said in the updates, are only looking at the trade and, oh my God, what's going on? I was assigned shares. Oh my God, what's going on? What do you mean rolling? Um, you, you have to come to understand the approach here. This is not a day trading service, even though we go in and out pretty quickly. This is not a, um, a service where we measure ourselves by what's happening on, uh, by Friday. We think long term, which is absolutely what you need to do in this kind of a market. And we think long term to generate cash and we trade short term to generate cash. We put the two together. So last week we were on point. We were on target. I want you to think about that. I'm not bragging. Okay, you're here. You're members. We hit our number in a week where people were fleeing the market and a week where professionals were fleeing the market in a week where uh, everybody's going either chicken little, the world is falling, or people are nuts to think that the world is, is ending because of a, a couple of banks having problems, we hit our number. If there's anything that I've said in an update or shown in a presentation for the past 12 months, maybe the past 24 months, this is the validation that thinking longer term, the core positions that we still call the roles, and the new positions that we're nimble with, if any combination of trades to generate cash is validation of the approach of thinking long term and shorting and, and trading short term for cash. It's this chart right here in a very, very difficult week. This is how it broke out. New trades, nice rate of return in and out very quickly. Roll trades, a little higher. You know, a roll trade I'm looking for 0.3 to 0.5. Uh, this is 0.7. Uh, I think it was because we were out a couple of weeks, but and the calls on shares were very, very healthy. That's more than point, uh, more than half a percent a week, which is quite something considering we still call reasonably distant from the current share price. So last week I had prepared, um, Emily and I worked together on this, as you, you know, and these were the headlines I captured, screen captured, and of course they're not valid now. Um, the lifeline to First Republic has slowed down concerns about the bank in the real world, but the stock pre-open was off this morning. And uh, Credit Suisse is gone. They were, they're being bought. Uh, the Swiss government you know, was loaning the money and they talked to the other Swiss banks and said, come on, this nonsense has to end. You're going to ruin our reputation as the world's greediest private, excuse me, the world's best bankers. And um, so this is how quickly things are moving. But the most important thing is the Fed has had a rapid and effective response combined with the efforts of the private sector, especially the ones around First Republic, uh, it's probable that Signature and Silicon Valley bank assets uh, will be purchased in a bankruptcy sale. And this aggressive response uh, was very, very important to at least stabilizing the sector and, and the market overall. Now, the sell-off uh, is different. We've discussed sell-offs here before. Intel has a bad day with an earnings announcement. The whole chip sector sells off. Pfizer says that they're going to reduce their vaccine estimates for 2023. Anything remotely related to COVID sells off, so forth and so on. A sell-off in the banking sector due to liquidity and credit fear, it's a whole different kettle of fish because that affects the entire world financial system, the world and domestic economy, the way everything. It, it's, it, the banking sector is the lubricant of everything we do uh, economically in the world and, and, and hits at some core trust issues on Wall Street. And the core issue is the word credit. It comes, it's derivative of Latin for trust. And if you don't trust the bank and put money in, they don't have money, they ain't lending. So it's not really complicated. 
it's important that everybody stepped in last week uh, and, and tried to arrest fears. And I think they did a pretty good job. But this is the reality, and how the reality translates to Wall Street is two different things. As you know, it happens all the time that Wall Street will be behind or be ahead of reality. The banks are much stronger. There's no comparison to 2007 and 2008. The banks, many were fundamentally busted and broke uh, because of terrible lending um, to people without, they were called ninja loans, no income, no job, uh, because of credit default swaps. Um, in 2008, and it's actually really uh, portrayed very well in the book, The Big Short, or, um, excuse me, Too Big to Fail, in the book Too Big to Fail, and the movie, which is quite good, um, there's a scene, and it's true, it happened. Paulson, uh, two of his key uh, financial types, uh, and the press person, who is literate but not schooled in the crisis itself, they inform her that if they had not rescued AIG, which was basically an unregulated insurance company that was taking on credit default swaps and guaranteeing debt all over the world, if AIG had gone out of business, and I, my math may be wrong, but more than 400 of the world's largest banks go bankrupt simultaneously, crashes the entire world financial system, makes the depression look like nothing. She's in a state of astonishment. <laughs> then how could it happen? But the point is, we're right now in a Little League baseball game in first or second grade, not Little League, Rec League, where you're hitting off a batting tee, and 2007, 2008, uh, to a certain extent, 2009, was the World Series for professional baseball. Um, they're not a perfect storm. That's not what's going on. Rescues have come in. They, they've shut Signature. They shut, they shut um, Silicon Valley. They're pumped money into Republic. UBS has bought Credit Suisse. So it's been pretty effective. But does Wall Street agree? And not just yet. Wall Street is struggling with how to move forward for a couple of reasons. Um, we're going to be cautious and optimi opportunistic, which is maybe a little bit more aggressive than Wall Street. I'm looking at three to five uh, trading days stability in the banking sector. I should be in the rearview mirror before we trade the sector. Uh, the growing concern on Wall Street um, is an exacerbated uh, economic slowdown because the banks will tighten uh, lending standards. When banks shed assets or don't collect deposits as much as they do, um, it means they have less money to lend. And if they have less money to lend, then they're going to be more circumspect in who they lend it to. We, of course, we're going to continue to trade. We just will find the opportunities where they're presented to us. So the market is now fearful. That's why I said three, five days. We need to look at the banking sector before we do anything with it. Recession fears are coming back. Now, one of the things that isn't here because the news came out over the weekend, because before this weekend, I found it to be a complete rumor, not a complete rumor, just a rumor. Goldman Sachs over the weekend said that uh, they believe the Fed will raise in March just to provide another thing stability. And, and I'm going to digress here a little bit, make this a little bit longer. For those of you who um, have been reading, but when you get into the weeds, you stop reading, which is your job is not to get into the weeds on this. Let's say a bank buys a treasury bill. If it holds it to maturity, there's no loss of money. Right? It doesn't matter if interest rates are going up or down. And they carry it on their books. The, the counting is to carry it to maturity. If they have to liquidate an asset because there are um, withdrawals and there has to be a certain percentage of support for your deposit base, then they have to sell in the open market in a bond that yields 2% or 3% and the market is now paying five, you take a massive hit on the value of that bond. Now, there was a great piece, it was probably in Barron's this weekend, showing the big banks, the JP Morgans of the world, what their exposure is if they had to sell their bonds. They're huge, it's hundreds of billions of dollars, but they don't. They're so flush with cash and they're so flush with deposits, et cetera, et cetera, there's no concern that they have to do any of this. And the street is still digesting all this data. But what they're also digesting is if the Fed stops, what does this mean in a good way for equity? So there's a bunch of confusion that continues. It was recession versus interest rate increases. Now we have 
more bearishness, maybe there'll be a pullback in lending and, and create more economic problems than previously anticipated. And there's more bullishness, maybe the Fed will raise in March. So you could see um, some more uh, instability in the market uh, this week. Um, you're going to see more sector rotation this week. You're going to see more conservative plays such as consumer staples or industrials and so forth and so on. So I'm going to watch that. We'll keep an eye on it. If we get into something, the first thing to look at, of course, is the KRE, which is the exchange traded fund for um, exchange traded fund for regional banks. In consumer discretionary, a volatile, high premium, big time brand company, Chewy. I still like the home builders. We had earnings last week that were pretty good. Wall Street has almost completed its focus. Let's not worry about interest rates. Just let's worry about the home builders making money. And there's a bunch, and a lot of it has to do with liquidity. So you've told brothers. Uh, D.R. Horton, uh, Lenar, and, and KB Holmes, as well as Pulte, uh, which is not there because of liquidity issues. Even these are, are somewhat illiquid. Just keep it. I'm keen to keep an eye on them. You're going to keep an eye on them. In a biopharma, I'm just waiting for the proper premium to trade Gilead Sciences again, maybe now, maybe a month from now. This is Michael Schulman. Thanks for listening.